Hello everyone and welcome to our event this morning, Taking On Takeaway, Recipes for Success, Make More From Sides. This event is a Chef Network event in partnership with Blenders and today's event will begin shortly. Thank you for joining us for the session today, which will last approximately one hour. All attendees will be automatically muted throughout the session. We will have time for questions at the end of today's test session. So if at any time during the event you would like to submit a question, this can be done via the questions function in your toolbar. Questions will then be answered during the Q&A session at the end. I am now delighted to introduce you to and pass you over to our chefs this morning, Nick Foley and Aidan McGrath from Blenders. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thanks, Rebecca. Uh, just a quick introduction. I'm Aidan uh, McGrath, one of the business development chefs here in Blenders. And Nick Foley, my colleague, will be joining us a little bit later on. So first and foremost, what we're doing here today is uh, we're looking at sides and small bites. The um, research into this started approximately two months ago. And uh, myself and Nick spent the last while trying to put together a document which you're about to share to you fairly shortly. But first and foremost, I'd just like to say um, a few words about Blenders, for those of you who don't uh, or may not be aware of us. Blenders is a family-run business, started 30, uh, just over 30 years ago, initially uh, just producing two products, which was mayonnaise and ketchup, and now we just have under 100 products. What is different about Blenders towards most of our other competitors out there is that we, uh, Blenders has never been offered as a consumer brand. So all the products that myself, Nick, and we all work on in here are designed for the catering industry. Um, two years ago, we moved from our old facility in uh, Newmarket, which is in Dublin 8, to a brand new state-of-the-art facility here in Tala. Um, the facility we have here is one of the most uh, advanced food manufacturing um, plants in Europe. So uh, what we're going to do now is, I'm actually just going to start with this slide here, and I don't know if everybody can see this. So this is the make more from your sides. So what we did over the last, as I said, two months was myself, Nick, and, and a few others. Around here. We, we were looking through menus. We looked all over the 32 counties. We looked further afield. We looked everywhere, really, looking at sides. So what we found was that sides can be the perfect complement to, to any dish. And in a lot of cases, uh, it does can become the star of the show. So what we have for you here is we've just put together, as I said, just over 60 menu ideas, and that's divided over nine categories. And these are all suitable for takeaway, but also suitable for, for eat in. So if I just move on to the very first bit of this now, we can see, now there's the index there. We have um, a couple of headings here. What we're going to do is the plan over the next 40 minutes or so is I'll just take you through this document, take you through the loaded fries, mashed potatoes, etc. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand you over to Nick and he's going to show you a little bit of the cooking of how uh, we finish off some of these dishes. So the first one there, as you can see, is loaded fries. Loaded fries are appearing on pretty much every menu we've come across over the last while. And um, the other thing about uh, loaded fries is that it is a great way to increase margin. By adding just a couple of ingredients to your loaded fries, to your fries, you can actually really elevate the dish and uh, bring it to life. And also, as I was saying earlier on, it can in many cases become the star of the show. The first one we see there, the pork star fries, Nick is going to prepare a little bit of that for us in a few minutes. And we will be able to uh, show you exactly how easy, how simple, how straightforward it is. So next one we're moving on to now is the smashing potatoes. Everybody seems to be smashing potatoes at the moment. I don't know where all this came from. Years ago, we never smashed a potato. But now, uh, every menu we're coming across does have an element of smashed potatoes in there. And again, it's, it is quite a simple, you can be very unique. And also, as I said, it can increase the margin by adding just one or two ingredients onto it. So, and, I, and to be honest with you, smashing potatoes is very, very much on trend at the moment. After that, we have the rice and the couscous. Again, another thing that we found over the last while is that couscous is appearing an awful lot more 
in a lot of places where you, you may not necessarily expect it to appear. Rice and couscous are absolutely natural um, side dishes. They, again, simple, adding a couple more ingredients to it, and actually by using the name of it, sells the actual product itself. So the one we're going to look at today is, uh, we've we a couple of them we're going to show you today, but the, um, yeah. So the next one is the um, spice up your vegetables. Again, in particular, we have look, looked at some, some of the dishes here. Broccolini is the one that Nick is going to make for you. So it's a very, very simple dish, but it's, it's effective and it travels well, and it's really ideal for takeaway. Whether you're heating it up um, at home or whether it's actually been delivered warm or hot, it is actually one of the one really good dish uh, for, to make. And it's, it's so simple to do, as you'll see later on. So when we move on from the vegetables, then we're moving into vegan. Vegan is very much here to stay. I know a couple of years ago, some of the chefs I've spoken to felt that this was a bit of a trend. It certainly is not a trend at the moment. It's certainly going to be here to stay. And in particular, vegan is, a, is an important one when it comes to sides, because if people have vegan ordering, at least you're ordering from one outlet and you don't have to go to, to other places to, to order. So I think it's one area where you can really, really concentrate to cover this vegan um, option is, is on the actual sides itself. Now, moving on with, to the next one, which is the slaws, it uh, will be wrong with us in hand blenders here, not to mention slaws. We've been um, making coleslaw for, for a long, long time. We don't actually make coleslaws ourselves, but making up coleslaws with cabbage, with carrot. And I think we've moved on a little bit from that. So what we're looking at here is by changing one or two little ingredients in there, we're going to make something that's a little bit more exciting than your standard coleslaw. Next is the deep fried. So deep fried sides are particularly, most of the ones in here can be, um, most certainly are, are, are a side, but also because a lot of them are like small bites, they could be also used as a starter. Um, one of the ones we're going to show you there today is the panko crusted feta um, nuggets, which is, again, it's, it's quite a simple dish to put together. And just by adding, again, a little bit of sweet chili sauce, we can add other sauces in there. It is, it really elevates. And this is the perfect, perfect sharing platter, as you'll see later on. So after that, we have all the rest. So these are some of the ones that we just added in there. There's a bit of a mix match in here. We have uh, the likes of the barbecue beans, um, which is, again, it's taking a very simple dish, but by adding a little bit more to it, and this is like a homemade bean using either a pinto bean, um, you could use, you can use any beans in here, but it just elevates it and it is a really, really good takeaway dish. And then finally, we have um, sauces. So all the sauces that we produce in here can be used as a side. Obviously, we just we could serve them out straight. So what we decided to do here was we added, um, we bought a couple of these sauces together just to show you that by mixing again a couple of ingredients with our sauces, how you can create something unique and something that can be unique to your own um, your own establishment. So that, as I said, is the document, and this document will be available to download. You can see it in the toolbar there um, on, on your right hand side of the screen. So I encourage that you do um, actually download this and have a look at, look through it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand you over to Nick, and Nick, as I said, is going to take you through about eight of these dishes. Um, most of them very, very straightforward. And what I'll do is just hand you over to Nick now. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, as Aidan said, thank you, Aidan. We're going to run through uh, some quick and easy uh, recipes that from the flyer there. And I'm uh, just going to show you how easy they are. You do a bit of mise en place beforehand, you'll be uh, well set up for uh, your service. So the first one we're going to do is going to be the four, uh, four star uh, load of fries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, some 10 by 10 mil uh, stealth chips or uh, skin on chips into the fryer. This is a great one because everyone will have chips. Uh, and you're probably selling chips as a, as a side for maybe four euro 
but with a couple of uh, extra ingredients, you can charge up 650 or 750. So we priced this out uh, from our suppliers at about uh, just over the two euro price mark using a pre-prepared uh, full pork and a slaw that we've made ourselves. Um, depending on the pork that you're using, if you're making, if you're smoking it yourself or you're, you're uh, slow cooking it in the oven, um, that'll, that'll affect the price. Okay, so I'm just gonna get our packaging ready. So we're using a biodegradable packaging here has been lined. Great. Great. Now, so as our fries are cooking there, I'm just going to take the pork out. So again, you can heat this up to order uh, in, a, in a pan with the sauce, or you can heat it up in the oven, or you can have a large tray of it warm in a bain marie. Uh, is that a shoulder pork you use there? Yeah, this is a, a pork shoulder. You can use neck as well. Okay. It's a cheaper cut uh, that will pull very well. This is, uh, this is, as I said, this is a pre, pre packed one that we bought uh, yesterday, but you can use, you can make it yourself using pork shoulder. You uh, just put your spices on, uh, smoke it uh, in a smoker or in an oven on a, about a 120 temperature for five or six hours. And uh, and you can use that pork for other things as well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's great for topping on a, a burger or um, in a pork sandwich. Now, fries are done. Just going to put these into into our container. Just be careful not to get the grease onto the side. So the presentation is important here. And these chips will hold their temperature. For 25 to 35 minutes. They're, they're not too skinny and they're not too fat. That's Could you it. use a thicker chip? I, I wouldn't recommend it. These ones are, are, are a perfect size. You want to have a you know a couple of chips in a bite with, with your other ingredients for your pork. So there's the chips and we're just going to put the pork on top. So the container that we picked is, is uh, tall and narrow so you don't have to use too much full pork uh, to keep your margins in line like that. And then we're going to top it with a slaw. This is an apple and celeriac slaw with a bit of Dutch cabbage, flat parsley and some French dressing. And then just give that a little toss. And this one you can make up uh, few hours in advance and the, the French dressing will keep the apple nice and bright, clean. So the apple and the celeriac will cut through the, the fat of the pulled pork and um, that's a nice touch to it. Now, and you can, if you want, you can give a little portion of, of your barbecue sauce on the side. This is a biodegradable uh, packaging with a recyclable lid. So you can actually charge extra for that, maybe 50 cent extra uh, per portion, uh, which is a great way to increase your margin. So it's all about getting uh, extra income from each customer. So that's that's that, nice and easy, very quick. Uh, you, uh, as you see in the, the document, we've uh, several other uh, loaded fries recipes. So you're using the same fry, but just other ingredients that you have around your kitchen. Um, okay, perfect. Now the next one is going to be the corn. So it's a Mexican street corn. So I'm just going to put it in the in the skillet here. Small bit of oil. Using and, olive oil there. Uh, I'm using. Uh, no, it's a peanut oil. Okay. And we have the corn in a little bain marie, keeping warm. So just drain off the corn. Yeah. Could this you cook that in the husk as well? You can cook this in the husk. That's no. Uh, that'd be great when it's in season. You can cook it uh, in the husk on a barbecue or on a char grill or over coals. Then peel back the husk and then get a bit of colour on. 
the uh, the corn itself. So this is just going to get a bit of color. So the internal temperature is already hot. So you're just trying to get a bit of color and a bit of smoky flavor onto it. You can do this on a char grill as well, or, or a flat grill if you have a flat grill. You can see there you're getting a bit of color. Nice, easy, quick, tasty dish. And we'll see now with the presentation. Be great for photographs, for your Instagram. Nice color on that thing. Yeah, this is the packaging we've chosen. It fits the corn really, really well. Corn is a great one for traveling. So it has, uh, it's so dense, it'll keep the temperature. Pop the corn in there. And then we're just going to drizzle some uh, chipotle mayo, which is a smoked chili. And then we're going to brush it on. You can roll it in this as well if you want. But the heat will just activate the, the mayonnaise. Nice and nice and gooey. Okay. And that'll melt through that, won't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then we're just going to use a bit of smoked paprika, double down on the heat and smokiness, and some chili flakes. So it's all about presentation here. Chili flakes. So um, I'm using feta cheese here at the moment. It's nice and crumbly. Could you use parmesan? Yeah, absolutely. You could use any other hard cheese. Um, I like the the feta because it cuts. It's a nice um, cut through the, the fat in the uh, the mayo. And then you just finish it with a bit of parsley, that parsley, just for a visual effect. Now, can everyone see that? Uh, yeah. So it's very good for uh, the old Instagram or your menus, your online menus. Hope your customers will share it too. Now, the next one is a broccolini. Pan on again. It's a, another very quick one, small bit of oil. I'm using peanut, you can use sunflower oil or whatever yeah. you have yourself. And you've got your broccolini or your tender stem broccoli, which has been prepped. So it's been trimmed slightly and it's been blanched and then uh, refreshed in ice water. And now I'm just gonna drop it in. You're just getting the heat back into it. Heat back into it and getting a bit of color, a bit of char on it. So this takes 20 or 30 seconds. There's a couple of different ways you could finish it. If you're, uh, if you're doing outside dining when that opens up, or if you're doing a uh, click and collect, you put them to are close. You could just add your your dressing straight away now, uh, or you can put it into the container and serve it on the side. Right. Any other veg you could use there? Yeah, peppers. Um, peppers are great, or asparagus is a, is another great one for this method. Um, so we're going to use the foil container. So this gives the, the customer an option of putting it into the oven when they get home if the delivery uh, is too far away. But if it's up to, up to half an hour away, you can uh, they can just pop it in their oven themselves to bring it back up in temperature, or if they're eating it at another time. Uh, or you could actually serve this cold like this. You char it, serve it cold with the, uh, the dressing and the other finishing. Um, it's a great way of getting the customer to finish it themselves. Now, so we're just going to finish it with a small bit of par uh, Parmesan or regatto, whichever you choose. We're using regatto, it's a nice Irish cheese. Just, just grate it on top and that'll uh, melt into the, the broccoli. And then we're going to give a nice honey and mustard dressing. Would you add the honey and mustard dressing on top of that? 
yeah, as I was saying, you can put it on top if it's a short delivery um, time to your customer. But if they're going to reheat it, they can reheat it in the tray, take out the, the dressing, reheat it in the tray, and then uh, drizzle the, the French dress or the honey and mustard dressing on the top. So that's what it looks like there. So very quick, easy. Uh, easy, easy prep, easy ingredients. You, you can knock loads of those out in an evening. Good margin, okay? Now, the next one, the panko feta. So, uh, these he's done earlier today. So you just pan fry or or deep fry your your feta. So we what I did was I used an egg wash. Um, and then or you can use just just milk uh, buttermilk and you just roll them in the panko and i have some smoked paprika and sesame seeds on this and then uh, roll them in that and then put them in the fryer for 30 40 seconds until it starts to set up and then you can uh, when the order comes in put them in the in the the oven and finish them bring them back up to temperature in the oven so we're just going to put them in this container here so there's loads of different types of packaging out there. Um, these ones are biodegradable, and they also look very good to present to present your your dish to the customer because it's just it's like your plate, you know. The, the yeah. say it's like the plate that you would have in a restaurant, rather than um, rather than just a packaging. So these are nice and soft. I you could do three. A four, you put three on. Uh, that could be a starter as well, couldn't it? Starter or a great sharing dish, put mm -hmm. the four on. And then we're going to serve some sweet chili on the side. Add a little bit of heat to it as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah a little bit of heat, a little bit of sweet, but through that, um, better flavour. Like that, and then just going to top it off as a little extra some sesame seeds. I'll put the presentation, and that's what that looks like. Okay, very easy and quick. Again, if you wanted to wrap that in foil um, a couple of times, if you're, you know, if it's going to be more than twenty minutes or half an hour delivery. Uh, you could wrap that in foil and that will give you an extra uh, protection from the heat or uh, if your delivery guy had an insulated uh, delivery bag like a, like a pizza bag or something that would be great also okay now the next one we're on to a, a, sal a salad isn't it or I can do these ones you do the salad perfect so this is a pear and walnut salad this is very quick. So have all the ingredients here. Got some spinach. We're using baby spinach. It's very robust. Nice Irish baby spinach. Those containers look good for salad, don't they? Yeah, they're great. It's got a nice, uh, shallow, wide uh, presentation container. Um, so we're just going to put some. Some of the uh, pear. Yeah, cut it up yeah. at the last minute, really. Yeah, you cut it up at the last minute so it doesn't uh, discolor. Uh, this, this is, is one you could play around with. I mean, there's plenty of other yeah, options. Yeah, absolutely. I find I like the the flavors in this: the the blue cheese and the um, the walnuts and pears. But uh, you can use whatever. I put some of these heirloom cherry tomatoes on. Add a bit of color. To it. And that's then, biodegradable container as well. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the, the base is biodegradable. Just throw it in your in your recycling, your food recycling waste. And the um, the plastic lid is recyclable as well. So just have one more. So here's a little toasted chopped walnut. Now this one is great. Uh, like this with the, the dressing, you can 
duties up uh, in the morning and they will hold all day. So if you did a little, if you're doing a, a grab and go, so if you're a cafe and you have a little chilled uh, chill fridge, you can have these done up uh, in the morning. That will help with your. Is it best to do the prep. dressing on the side with that? Yeah. So you can do the dressing on the side like this. It's a balsamic dressing, which goes well with the, the, the pear and the blue cheese. Um, but uh, also the you could toss the the you could toss the uh, spinach in it as well. The spinach because it's baby, it'll hold it. Um, uh, it'll hold it'll hold it. Okay. Now. Here we are. So that's that's it. Quick and easy. As I said, you can do them up, you know, three, four, five hours in advance, and uh, the spinach will hold no problem. Okay. So the next one. As we said, we're we're famous for our slaws. So this is a, a little different uh, slaw recipe. Um, we've got uh, Dutch cabbage, red cabbage, and carrot, which is the uh, Pretty standard, but the, the topping we're going to use is a ranch dressing. This is adds a little garlic, garlic hit to your nice buttermilk your, flavor. Yeah, well. buttermilk garlic hit to your uh, to your slaw, and that's good for you know, pulled pork or uh, roasted meats. It'll pair well with those, or it's great on on the side, like buttermilk chicken. If you're doing deep fried chicken, it'll cut through the the grease of the of the chicken. So there we go. Give it a quick one more stir. That goes really well with burgers and stuff as well. Oh yeah, it's great for topping it. Uh, Chicken burger or beef burger, as well as your pulled pork. Now that's it, nice and easy. So if everyone can see that, a very quick and easy. You can add some flat parsley or or a little bit of onion or spring onion or something uh, to give it a bit of colour, or even a bit of red onion. Um, but yeah, so the next one uh, is going to be the halloumi fries. So this is very quick and easy. So in this, we just have flour. You could use rice flour for this. Uh, we just have flour, uh, smoked paprika, uh, cayenne, and uh, garlic, uh, garlic powder, and a bit of cracked black pepper. I didn't put any salt in it because the, the I find the halloumi sometimes very salty. So you just toss them in it. These were done about 15 minutes ago, and then shake them off and drop them into the fryer. And your portion is much, much smaller than a normal fry. So this is this is a really good side. Um, they are very filling, aren't they? They're very dense, yeah. So we just throw these in, that'll be a big portion. <laughs> Generous. Yeah, generous. So very quick, uh, very quick in the fryer. You know, you wanna be careful. You don't wanna put them in too long because they get uh, very soft. And again, we're going to put them in this nice container. So, with these, you don't need to dip them in buttermilk or or egg wash. You just put them straight into the into the, uh, the flour mix, and that's it. I'll show you those now in a second. So, you can see them. They've taken on. A lovely color and they're crispy on the outside and you know gooey in the inside they really don't take long do they no less than 30 seconds this could be sharing one or a great starter as well you know if you want to put a bit of salad with it it's a great starter so we're just going to do some toppings so we've got some fresh pomegranate There, got some fat parsley, and then we made up this garlic and herb uh, mayo uh, with buttermilk. It's just 
half and half garlic and buttermilk. And it's I'm going to come out. There. And then we are going to serve it with an apple and chili, apple and chili chutney. Where did you come up with this idea? Uh, I first saw this in Camden Market in London on one of the, the trips that I we do when we're doing a bit of food safari. Yeah, back when we could. Very, very, very popular. Great for Instagram. Um, it's a lovely, lovely dish. So that's what it looks like there. So nice and neat, uh, very tasty, very quick. Lumi's a little expensive, but um, it, I think it's worth it. You, you, you can charge, you know, six or seven euros for that. You could make a smaller size portion, obviously. A smaller well. size portion, yeah. That, um, but it goes, you want to get um, all you can from your customers. Uh, each time they purchase. Okay, so the next one is going to be, uh, this is a really easy one, the chimichurri style um, dressing marinade. So in here we just have some uh, flat parsley, uh, sage, thyme, uh, garlic, green chili, a bit of rocket you could put, um, uh, you know, any, any other herbs you have and I'm going to put, I'm going to blend that first just a quick, quick blend. Now, you don't want it too, too fine, but it's uh, blended like that. And then you add in your, your French dressing, a nice bit of French dressing now. And then back into a quick blend just to incorporate it. So this could be used as a sauce and also as a based on meats and absolutely so it's a great as a uh, as a sauce on the side of grilled meats grilled meats or charred you know a, a barbecue or a steak sandwich or whatever but um and then we're just going to add a small bit of red pepper on the top just to give it a, a bit of heat and a bit of color now and there, there we go. Great, a great side for uh, steak sandwiches, and steaks, and grilled meats. Okay, and that's it. So we just have a, a couple of our uh, the other sides that we've made up just to show you. And Aidan's going to talk through those. Okay. So this is just just a selection of a few of the other ones just that we prepared a little bit earlier. So uh, this one here is the asparagus, which has uh, done in a flaked almond, which has been toasted with a little sriracha glaze on the top. So it's nice, it's colorful. And uh, as Nick was saying a little bit earlier on, like with the broccoli, it's, it transports quite easily, quite well, and does stay quite warm. The other one we have here is the, this is uh, Mexican rice. So basically we just use our salsa sauce. You can use any rice whatsoever. We've added a little bit of smoked chorizo in here, a little few peppers, um, and a little bit of just mix with, through the rice. So that will heat up really, really well and would actually stay very warm if you were transporting it. Could as you well. put any other meats in that? Um, meats? Yeah, you could. You could use pork belly. Pork or belly, like you, yeah, any, any sort of meat. You could use any, any other type of meat really in there, any type of pork. Pancetta. Pancetta would be really, really good. But uh, the smoked chorizo actually works really, really nice with that one. So this one here, that's just tater tots. So basically cubed potatoes. This is a little bit of a nod to the, the chippers, but um, what we've done is we've just cooked the, the uh, potatoes in the fryer and we've added a little bit of tomato and chili sauce to this. And then we sprinkled it with the sauce that Nick was showing you earlier on, which is the garlic mayonnaise mixed with a little bit of buttermilk. So it's kind of just a nice rich flavor. This would be great for the kids' menu. Absolutely, yeah. Um, With a little bit of heat in there as well. Yeah. It's a little bit of um, a little I think, bit of heat. I think the kids take can take some heat. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. More than you think. The last one is uh, this is a red cabbage with simple just the pink lady apple. And it's been braised. And then what we've done is we've just added some of our own cranberry sauce into it. So it is a really colourful, really good sort of a seasonal one, perhaps around Christmas time, would be ideal on, on any menu. 
but um, it goes really well with the likes of game, turkey, um, anything like that. It just elevates the sauce a little bit. Not just for Christmas. It's not just for Christmas, exactly. So Great. that's it, uh, folks. Um, thank you very much for that. I hope some you all got something out of this. And as I said earlier on, if you need to download the, um, the list, it is on your toolbar on the right hand side of your screen. And also there's a link there to our brochure. So if anybody wants any uh, samples of any Blender's products, they're more than welcome to contact Rebecca there. We, we get the information passed on to us um, and we will organize to get a sample of any Blender's product out to you. So I think I'll hand you back over to Rebecca just to check and see if anybody has any questions. Yeah, brilliant guys. Thanks so much, Aidan and Nick. That was fantastic. Um, we're getting lots of comments in saying people are now starving <laughs> after seeing all those delicious recipes. Um, so a couple of the questions that I have in here, I'll start with this one. Um, somebody wants to know, what are the top three trends in sides right now? Well, um, okay, I'll take that. For me, in the research, I found that the load of fries really stuck out to me as being one of the, the top, definitely one of the top trends. Um, it's it's literally on, on, on an awful lot of menus, and I, I, it makes sense when you look at it because it is upselling a little bit. It is just adding a little bit more to it. The other one, I suppose, vegan is very very much in, and vegan sides are huge. The amount we found initially when we looked at this, I thought we may not find as much in in this area of sides, but as we dug into it, I would say this document could be about twice the size. Uh, the amount of stuff that we found. Um, the other one I suppose stuck out for me was couscous, uh, appearing a lot more in menus that you wouldn't expect it to appear on. And I think that's it probably makes sense. It's a it's a good tasty dish that, that holds well and is good for takeaway. That answers your question. That's great, Aidan. Thanks. Um, somebody actually followed up to that just on your mention of research asking where and how did you do the research on the sides? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't visit any of uh, the restaurants, but we did uh, online research. So we we looked at um, menus from all our our local areas, the takeaways, the f the food trucks, the traditional uh, restaurants, uh, and we did that for the thirty two counties. Um, so that's where we got our research. We, we, uh, I mean, we do a lot of research all the time just to, to keep up to date with what's what's going on. So uh, the internet's a great help. Um, we also have um, uh, other chefs that we would contact and, and ask uh, what what's going on for them. So that's that that's the best way to do it at the moment. Uh, internet or um, or through books and stuff like that. Hope that answers the question. Mm. Brilliant. Thanks, Nick. Um, somebody is wondering, um, you know, for the takeaway um, offerings, do you or would you label any of your takeaways with allergens or advisory information? For example, food needs to be consumed within 90 minutes, etc. Yes, absolutely. Um, I suppose you could put it on your ordering system, uh, but you should, uh, if you have instructions to reheat, uh, they should be clearly labeled. Your allergens should be on each of your dishes, uh, just in case uh, the consumer, uh, when it gets to your, when it gets to their house, uh, didn't look at the your website. Uh, so you should have your allergens on on your on your meals, and your reheating instructions, which should be, you know, as detailed as you can make them, to, so the customer gets the best uh, experience from your dish, or um, yeah, consume within 90 minutes or, or chill and, and refrigerate uh, if that's an option. So the more information you give to your, your customer, uh, the better experience they will have in, uh, at the end. Brilliant. Thanks, Nick. Okay. Um, another question we have here, and I'm probably going to um, not pronounce this right at all. <laughs> um, somebody was saying, great ideas. Any ideas for um, Induya? seems to be on trend <laughs> yes absolutely yeah pizza uh, yeah pizza uh, it's it's a it's a new wonder wonder ingredient um i love it on pizza just you just need a tiny tiny bit uh, um or you could put it on a like a 
outside sides, I suppose. Uh, I've seen it on um, seasonal carrots or charred carrots with induya um, pizza. It, it makes a lovely pasta sauce. So if you uh, use tomatoes, uh, cook them off and then put in your induya and add your whatever pasta you'd like. That's a, that's a lovely way of using it. Uh, or on a like a crostini or a bruschetta. The other one I, I actually did there a while ago was making up a polenta and just using the andouille, mix through the polenta and then let it cool down, let it set, and then slice it and just fry it. And it was yeah. tasty. Yeah, it's ni really nice, heat, nice heat in it. Brilliant, thanks Hope guys. that answers your question. Um, a question here on packaging. So you went through quite a lot of packaging options in your demo there, um, Nick. And what type of packaging would you say out of all of them would be best for takeaway? I suppose it, because there's so many different ways takeaway is being done at the moment. So you've got your your kits and you, or your click and collect or your traditional uh, your order and it's deliver takeaway. Each packaging type um, can fit into those sections. So for the, the say the, the kits, you can use backpack bags so the customer can just reheat, uh, say if you have uh, asparagus or your mashed potato um, in those, or even your meats in those, uh, you just take the bag, you pop it in the, in, in the boiled water at, at home. Um, so that's one way. Um, so, and then there's the foil, the traditional, so we'd say the traditional Chinese takeaway ones. There's great for if the customer is going to have to reheat it. Um, and also it, it helps hold the temperature, the foil holds the temperature. So if it's it's click and collect or delivered, um, they're a great option. Um, and they're also, once they're cleaned, they can be re uh, put into the recycling. Um, or there's the, the biodegradable, uh, options which uh, are great but it's difficult to keep the heat in them so you probably still have to wrap them in foil um, so there's I mean so this, you better uh, I mean and there's a great selection of, of packaging out there so yeah. you just need to go get to your supplier get to your cash and carry uh, find what's out there find what suits you uh, and what type of, of delivery service you're providing at the moment but there's no one one fits all um, method, unfortunately, at the, uh, uh, available. Okay. Great. So I hope Thanks, that answers Nick. that question. Um, and then another question that I have here is just um, in your demo, you kind of mostly put the uh, sauces on the side. Would you always recommend to just do that to kind of allow people to to kind of help themselves, or is there a kind of a rule of thumb that you would follow? Well. Yeah, it's, it, it makes sense really to put it on the side because if you just dress something like a salad at the last minute, it, it'll, it'll taste better, it'll look better. I think if you put it into the packaging, what tends to happen is that um, the leaf can become very wilted and very, very, um, it, it can sink into the packaging. So it would be better, I think, in most cases to, and if you take something like, say, the coleslaw, obviously we're going to mix that beforehand, but that'll, that'll hold because it's, it's a mayonnaise based one and it's a little bit heavier so it should hold but anything delicate like a salad i think it is handy to put the the sauce on the side or the dressing on the side so it yeah, makes sense especially if the customer's finishing the the meal or reheating the meal it, it's much better to have the sauce on the side um because stuff doesn't always reheat well when the sauce is on it uh, because the sauce is uh, because the, the oven is high to get the temperature into the ingredient, um, the sauce tends to dry out. So they're not necessarily designed for that. Uh, so the sauce on the side is great. Um, and also if the customer feels like it's their cooking uh, a part of the dish. Um, so they get, uh, hopefully they get some enjoyment out of that. Mm -hmm. Hope that Brilliant. That. Yeah, thank you both. Um, that's all the questions we have in, unless anybody has anything else that they'd like to ask. Um, but otherwise everybody is praising the demo and as I said saying that they're all very hungry now after that <laughs> um, but thank you both for your time today but thank you both so much that was absolutely fantastic
Yeah, listen, Rebecca, thanks very much. Really appreciate uh, you giving us the opportunity to do this. And yeah. as I said, this um, that document you saw earlier on is available for download. So I would suggest that everybody does that if they, they can. Yes, and and easy. Yep. The, there will be a follow-up email sent out with details on how to um, get in contact if anybody wants a sample of the product, as Aidan mentioned. And this um, event will also be, the recording will be available probably tomorrow on chefnetwork.ie for anybody who wants to catch up on anything as well if they missed anything or they missed the beginning. Brilliant. Thanks, Thanks everybody so much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye. Have a good day.